Testament reading comes to us from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. The call of Abram. The Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And then we turn for, to our New Testament reading from John 1, uh, verses 43 to 50. Jesus calls Philip and Nathaniel. The next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael said. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, he said of him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw under a fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. Then he added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God descending, ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Amen. The theme today is we are chosen and we are called. We are chosen and we are called. I'm not sure what it is about us, but we always, most of the times, think of ourselves as small. We, we think we just don't have it in us. We think there are others that are always better than us, and yes, there will be. That doesn't make you and I any less of a being. For God calls all of us. If it were not so, why would you have got up this morning to come into the sanctuary? Because you know you are chosen and you are called. God doesn't call you because you have some intellectual ability that others don't have because you are more perfect than someone else, or we can decipher mysteries, or because we are socially and economically more able. He calls us, and he draws us unto himself, and he says, I want to fulfill my purposes in you. And therefore, I am calling you. Being called by God is to embark on a journey of redemption. We need to consciously reflect on our lives, past and in the present. We all come from a past that is inherently was evil and violent and perpetuates itself even to this day. We all carry within us some form of guilt and failure. We are an affected people who have had to deal with struggles personally, politically, socially, and economically. For Father Michael Lapsley, I get no royalties from putting that up there, by the way. Let me declare it. But for Father Michael Lapsley, it was a struggle for redemption in his fight against an apartheid system. 
that even as a letter bomb destroyed his body, he searched to find meaning and bring peace to a broken nation through Christian pacifism was and remains a search for redemption and healing. We have a past that has made and continues to make us lesser beings, and our own selfish and sinful nature has led us not to God, but away from Him. And so when there is deep hurt in our lives, we tend to stray from the very God that can bring healing. There's deep within us a yearning for redemption as we pray for God's guidance in dissolving conflicts in our lives, our families, and the world. Our anxiety for the future has made us fearful. We live a lost hope in our country and in the world. And we found ourselves to be a scattered people. We have created a new diaspora as we witness our families and communities search for a better life for themselves. There is not one family who you and I do not know whose children live in other parts of the world. My nephew lives in Sydney. He says to me, I've never seen such a cosmopolitan community in my life. People are here from all over the world. Everybody running away from their place of birth, irrespective of where they come from. We are all on the run. Father Lapsley would say, we have become victims, and as victims, Unfortunately, we've become passive. Well, may we ask, what can we do? But to choose to remain inactive and silent does not assist. In a sense, our inaction is to belittle our own faith and we belittle God in our unbelief instead of reaffirming that we are called and chosen by God. When God calls, a spirit of healing comes over us. We become active and take agency and purpose for our lives. We cannot just sit in the pew. We cannot just sit and wait. When the Methodist Church of Southern Africa says that we are one and undivided church, what do we do when we know it's not true? We need urgency. And that urgency is not going to come from the clergy. Sorry, clergy. It's going to come from you and I, the laity. We are the church. We need urgency. And laity, it's you and I who need to take this church back to the values as they were expounded by our founder, John Wesley. This week I was watching some of the things happening at conference, the Methodist Church Conference. I'm appalled, I'm saddened to think that our church is in the hands of these leaders that we've elected. And I don't care saying it publicly. We are in trouble. And God has called you and me to set it right. Because we want and we will be a one and undivided church. You and I are called and we cannot remain inactive. God calls us to action. When God calls Abraham, Knowing that in terms of the culture and the Abrahamic clan, there are three things that are important to these ancient peoples. The importance of land. Does it sound new? The importance of land. 
distant relatives, and immediate family. Those were the three things put together that was the glue to Abraham's plan. This tells us that God knew well the difficulties that these separations may cause. Abram is simply to leave everything behind and to trust implicitly in God's guidance. Abram knows nothing about the land he's going to. He does not know about Canaan yet. But he believes that God will show him and lead him and inspire him. Despite the bonds of land, relatives and family, Abram remains faithful to God and God's call. When God chooses and calls us, we need to trust God and know that God will lead us and that he'd pour out his spirit on us so that his purposes may be fulfilled. God knows where he needs us in his growing kingdom. Therein lies the blessing of God. Remember in pre-Israelite and in cultic tradition, a blessing is known to be an increase in life, meaning innumerable descendants. We often speak of the seed of Abraham. You will be blessed with many descendants. The blessing that Abraham has from God is that he should have, not a clan, but that he would be father of all the nations. And to this day, there are communities that believe that the more children you have, the more you are blessed. Well, yeah. <laughs> on this journey that Abraham embarks on, God begins to teach us and to lead us. There are events that happen on this journey. I want to name just two. There's the giving of the Ten Commandments. That you may have many descendants. That you may have many descendants. But Barbara, take responsibility. There are now rules that govern the way you behave. You cannot just do as you want, despite this blessing. There's the story of the Tower of Babel, where people attempt to secure arbitrary what God had intended for them already. They thought they could get to heaven without God, and so they build a tower. But God had every intention of them getting to heaven. But they wanted to get there on their own steam. And God says that's not going to happen. So what begins to unfold, please hear me out, what begins to unfold is free choice and judgment. And they begin to overshadow the mere notion that um, you can have as many children as you like and that it will be seen as a blessing. The blessing remains but comes with responsibility, free choice, and judgment. God's people have a choice. But with that choice comes an understanding, too, of forgiveness, grace, and salvation. They come to the fore. And that is why Isaiah and Deutero Isaiah, someone asked me in the week, well, who's Deutero Isaiah? Well, from verses 40 to 55 in Isaiah, we don't know who the author is, so we refer to the two Isaiahs. But the Isaiah narratives speak to redemption. They speak to experiencing God's grace and to see greater things in God, leading each of us to himself, in whom we find forgiveness and salvation. When Jesus declares to Nathaniel, he will see much greater things. Jesus is really speaking about fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham, but also to his earthly work, which comes to some conclusion 
when the high priest at his trial asks him, are you the son of the blessed? And Jesus answers, yes, and you will see me at the right-hand side of my father. To see greater things is to see beyond what we now see and understand. Nathaniel sits under this fig tree, full of skepticism, almost self-denial, pondering his future. Where can he see greater things? Often we just sit under a fig tree contemplating, dealing with our own insecurities and doubts. And then Jesus comes, as he comes to us this morning, and he says, stop sitting there in the pew and begin to see the greater mysteries of God for yourself and for others. See beyond your own plight and begin to focus on the greater you that you can make a difference is important. The you that can reach out and profess a living God whose spirit is calling out to you and leading you into an understanding of the greater mysteries of God. To be part of God's work for the kingdom is the highest calling. It is, the greatest, it is our greatest purpose. God's desire is to be glorified both in us and through us. He doesn't this by changing us from inside out by the power of his Holy Spirit, surrendering one will at a time. For Nathaniel not only sees in Jesus an open heart, but rather an open heaven. Do you see heaven as you view and see Jesus in your life? Nathaniel does not only see Jesus' open heart, but he sees an open heaven. From pondering and imagining a purpose for himself under the fig tree, he comes to claim his acknowledgement that this is the Messiah. And indeed, something good has come from Nazareth. Do we not merely just say, I'm called by God, and that's it? The point really is that God chooses us for he knows us and calls us with purpose. He calls us with purpose. So a very wise man was addressing, addressing an interfaith group. There were Christians, Muslims, Jews, Sikhs, Hindus. They were all there. And he says to them, and they're all wanting to uncover God's purpose in their lives. And he says to them, a very wealthy man walks through that door. Let's call him Patris Matsepe. And he says, Brackenus Methodist Church, I'm signing over all my mining rights to you. Yeah, we are happy. Hey, we are blessed, man. We triple the size of the church. We put in seven screens. We put in a sound system here that will make the Royal Albert Hall look small. Poor Fan has to go to Port Blanche and explain all this to the, to the country. Can you imagine Fan on Port Blanche? Hey, I'd love to see it. Fun, are you excited about what's happened to me? Yes. <laughs> you know, you're going to franchise the church? I think so. He says, let me tell you something. You all sitting here, this is the wise man talking, not me. <laughs> you're all sitting here. You all tell me the Jews are so successful because they're the chosen race. Let me tell you, they're dark. Every world country 
as a dark place. I don't want to go into the Palestinian Jewish thing here. But don't say the Jews are a chosen race. When you're sitting here and you know God has called you, he's called you because he's chosen you. And when he chooses you and calls you, he strips you of everything. You have nothing. Because the only thing you have is the Holy Spirit that will lead you to uncovering God's purposes for yourself and for others. That's all. I'm not saying rush home and sell your Bentley or sell your house. That would be irresponsible. What I am saying, that's not above where you put God. God strips you when he calls you and he chooses you you have nothing. What you do have is a Christ and the Holy Spirit working in your life. And go and do God's work. When Jesus hears his friend Lazarus has died, he rushes to Bethany to be with Mary and Martha and he weeps with them. When he hears a centurion's child is ill, his spirit leaps to that child. When people are unjust, he speaks truth to power. When people are hungry, he takes some fish and some small loaves of bread and he feeds the multitudes. When a woman is being stoned to death, he intervenes. When people become corrupt and dishonest and greedy in the temple courts, he throws them and their tables right out. What is God's purpose for you and me? Has God truly called you as he truly calls me for all that he wants us to do? is to fill his purposes in your life and in the lives of others. God bless you as we celebrate Heritage Day and our togetherness in the presence of God. Amen.